Good afternoon, everybody. Work day done, and I am headed home. But I wanted to continue our conversation from this morning, and now I have another drive to do part two of talking about a way to charge your electric car or your Tesla in your home garage. Uh, I do stand by that statement. I think that some people might argue that point, but I believe having the ability to charge your own car is uh, on your home site is of utmost importance. You can have your work charger, but let's say you get fired or you're sick or disability or vacations and things like that. Well, now you don't have your day-to-day -day charge. So I do think having it in your house or on your property uh, really is ideal to not be bound to this whole, you know, now you're a slave to the ability to charge. Having said that, even when you get your electrical outlet all squared away at home and whether you have an HPWC or the UMC, which is the portable connector that comes with the car, doesn't really matter when it comes to the fact that this is a fallen world and stuff is going to break. In fact, I can guarantee you it's going to break at some point. And what you do next kind of determines how easy it is to get back on your feet, even if you're under warranty. So I, I'm an admin for a Facebook group here in the local area. and We had a, a, a new owner who had a similar problem with his relatively new car. Now, he knew that it wasn't charging properly. He was getting that red ring on his charge port, but he didn't know why. And there's a lot of possibilities as to why. So let's just kind of break it down real quick. Um, and, and these are all subject to change as Tesla changes their designs. This car is a 2014. At that time, you could get a single charger standard in the car, and that charger would max out at 40 amps to the battery. There was an optional charger, which this car has, and it was called a dual charger option, and that gave you another charger that ran in uh, sequence to the first charger. So it would also do 40 amps. So this car, when given a power source, like an HPWC, which at that time topped out at 80 amps, I think now they top out at 72. I think they're a little bit lower. Uh, that generation HPWC would give you 80 amps of power into the car. If you had, for example, 60 amps going in or 50 amps, which was common at some of the destination chargers in that day, and, and well, assumably those, those chargers are still, still out there, that, again, the charger worked sequentially. It didn't split it between the two chargers. It would max out charger number one and then go to charger number two. Um, came in handy. Uh, it was good to know. Now, why that's important is if you have a problem with charger number one, you don't get any charge. It doesn't default or switch over to charger number two and use that as a primary charger, at least not as far as I know. So even though you would have two chargers in your car, one of which works perfectly because it was a secondary charger, you're just screwed. Uh, the only upside to that was I have heard of people going to Tesla and having them, rather than replace the first charger, simply switch over the connectors and run off, make the second charger basically the first charger, and they only ran on one charger. Uh, that seems to be a very rare occurrence. I think I only read about one guy being able to do that uh, because there's a lot of connectors and stuff that have to change. What has more commonly been done, and I know I've read multiple accounts of that, is somebody taking the secondary charger and moving it into the first charger position and then just trashing the first charger. Or if you're out of warranty, you're gonna, you want to keep it because it's usually a fuse that can be replaced, but it's a solder fuse. It's not a fuse that's intended to be replaced. So you can do that on your own and you'll have a good charger, albeit not actually mounted in your car anymore. We'll see a lot more about this coming out as the cars age, I'm sure, and more and more people start doing uh, out of warranty work themselves or going to independent shops. So that's how those chargers work. When the power comes in and it's uh, AC power off your house or something, a public charger, it has to go through one or two of those chargers. On the newer cars, it is, I think, one charger that's either uprated to 72 or downrated or a lower grade charger that tops out, I think, at 48. Um, is, is the rating on it. It doesn't actually give you that much to the car, I don't think. I haven't kept up with the specs. But basically, you're using the charger that's built into the car. So um, the UMC, for its part, is kind of uh, just being clever and detecting what's coming in, but it's really the charger in the car that, that's doing the work. Now, uh, when you're supercharging, that's DC, and that's a direct current. And that is bypassing the onboard chargers. It doesn't touch them, it goes straight through. Now, the reason why that's an important distinction is because if you're having a problem charging your car, and I've had problems with both systems at different times, uh, you may be able to supercharge and go through that DC fast charger, and now you, you're still able to get the battery recharged, even though your onboard charger isn't working properly, or that your UMC is not working properly, or the outlet at your house, or the breaker. So, 
anytime you have a charging issue of any kind, there's a whole list of things that you want to go through. Let's say you plug into the garage and um, you get an error or you're getting, what, what happened to me a couple times is I had a lot of clicking and, and weird, you know, back and forth. The handshake wasn't clean between the charger and the car. All right, well, is it the charger or is it the car? Oh, the easiest answer is go find yourself another charger. Got a friend? They got a Tesla? Borrow their UMC. Go to their house. Plug in. Does it work? All right, it's probably your, UM, probably your UMC that's the problem. Plug your UMC into their outlet. You still get the same problem? Oh, now you know. It's just basic troubleshooting. If you have the issue where the power is down rating, in other words, you plug it in to charge at 40 amps, and it's telling you it can only do it at 20 amps, well, that's probably a quality of current problem. So you can do the same sort of procedure, but odds are it's going to be something in the wiring or something in the connection that's not part of the UMC. So you can still go check those things. This will save you time going to the service center if you can at least help them narrow down what the problem is. I understand you're under warranty and you want to take advantage of it and all that, but I kind of like to know what's going on. I figure the easier I can make it when I take it into service, the less likely I am to have one of those annoying, <coughs> excuse me, uh, could not duplicate or, or, you know, unable to resolve sort of things. Uh, Tesla's not really giving me that problem, but <laughs> don't want to start now. So uh, next thing you're going to want to check in that case is your wiring. Make sure your power's off, double check your breaker connections, double check the lugs on the plug, double check all of those connections, make sure they're good. Try our UMC again and see if you have the same error. If you do, I would say start with the breaker. In my case, I had a bad breaker. Uh, about a year or so after I installed it, something internal to the breaker failed. So it would charge, but it was getting warm. It was actually very warm to the touch, and it wouldn't go above, I think, 25 amps or something like that. So I knew there was something funny. Um, when I was testing it, I could feel the heat coming off it. It wasn't like hot to the touch, but it was definitely warmer than it should be. Uh, I tried my stove breaker. I actually swapped them, and I had no problem with anything, and it went right back up to 40 amps, no problem. So I knew it was the breaker. Breakers are cheap. They're usually about, I don't know, I think it was like under $10. Uh, so I swapped the breaker, and it, that one's been in there ever since. And again, you want to stick with the manufacturer of your box. You don't want to be mixing and matching manufacturers, generally speaking. So um, the other thing to consider is that if you have a destination charger nearby or even a public charger, or in, in my case, I would go to Ross Park Mall. Well, they have uh, HPWCs at the Tesla store there. because I should say they have a Tesla store there, and in the parking lot they have HPWCs. I could test it there. That way I would know that both chargers on board the car are working and that would help me rule in or out my personal UMC. Um, if you're having slow supercharging speeds, obviously you can go to another stall at the same supercharger. You could also go to a different supercharger. I happen to be fortunate in that I live within a few miles of two locations, so I could do that. Um, when we were on our trip over the summer, we were definitely having some slow supercharging sessions and couldn't quite make out why they were slow because it was nice weather wasn't overly hot but it wasn't cold the car was warm because we were on a road trip and so none of the usual problems seemed to be there and it turned out when we got back that the service center because i asked them about it and the service center determined that there was um, corrosion on the plug in the charge port uh, which i hadn't seen or hadn't noticed and it didn't affect the ac charging when i charged at home but they determined that the corrosion there was probably slowing down the supercharger speeds. They had the car for a couple days. They changed that uh, charge port out, and I think they, I'm not sure if they did anything else related to that or not, but anyway, it supercharges fine now. I took it out right away to make sure, and uh, she ramped right up to, it was over 110 kilowatt, and, and uh, I knew we were good. Uh, I should point out that we were on our trip over the summer. It would ramp up, but within a few minutes, it would go down to somewhere in the 40 or 50 kilowatt range. So having said that, maybe not a bad idea that if you're having slow supercharging, you should consider doing the old uh, Q-tip method and going in there with the appropriate solution. I'm not sure what it is, but if you look up online, I'm sure you'll find somebody who's done it. And clean out those ports very carefully on your car. Now I have noticed on the UMC's uh, connector end, that the bottom kind of goes through there's basically three connections there the bottom one which is like a hole not a pin tends to get gunk in it for some reason i don't know if it's corrosion i don't know if it's just where the moisture kind of settles when it's um you know if it's wet or, or condensation or something like that but i have noticed that 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 
one in particular seems to be a little prone to getting clogged up and, and makes for a tighter fit with your charger. So that's a good place to start, I think, if you're having issues with your UMC. Now, like I said, I've replaced supercharger parts. I've replaced, uh, I'm on my third UMC, a charge port. So uh, it does happen. And that's just the nature of, you know, it's still better than gas because you have multi, you have an option. You can actually bypass the onboard chargers and go to the supercharger. How great is that? Or vice versa. All right. I want to keep this viable. Please subscribe to this channel to keep us going. And thank you very much for watching.